shuts every one of them down. That's a full team kill. That's that was that. another. He's looking for a third. He's oh. gonna get it, sir. Against Kinger now in a one versus two. Once again, he finds one. He finds the second. He's still alive. Can he go in? Oh, oh my goodness. God. He's gonna go far down and give Saints the lead again. Hello Saints Nation, welcome back. We have ourselves a double header of Overwatch action. It's been a little while since we got to see the squad on the field itself, so looking forward to seeing this matchup up ahead. My name's Dan Banner, also known as Mr. Danners, and for the first time on the commentary desks here, we have Matthias Eitzen. But all of you at home might know him as Apostle. Welcome yes. to the commentary booth. Thank How are you, you doing? I'm happy to be here. I'm doing super well. And, you know, uh, as a former player for the Overwatch team, I'm really excited to see what this uh, this new generation is bringing to the table here tonight. Oh, absolutely. Of course, the, the lineup that we're going to end up seeing here for tonight's matchup is pretty much, for the most part, brand new from what I understand. We do have two returning players, but four brand new players brand new signees coming in for the september um matchup and our first look to actually get to see them but of course the opponents for tonight and the format for how things are going to be going so opponent northeastern university now you've had a little experience playing up against northeastern in the past Can i tell do me a little bit yeah more about that you know northeastern in the past they were they were a really solid team and uh, they were a team that for the saints uh, we we did struggle against them and they did end up beating us a couple times there in the our past close games though, to be fair. they were close yeah you know but uh, they just they seemed to managed to find the edge uh, and hopefully this time uh you know we have these new players coming in we're coming in with a new look and hopefully we're tr we're gonna be turning the tables on them i'm finally proving that you know saints do deserve to stand at the top there oh, absolutely and in regards to the series or the tournament that we were in this is still hue fest i know we've been seeing a little bit of hue fest for uh league of legends and rocket league so far first time we're going to get to see the overwatch squad compete here but normally for competitive Overwatch matches, you usually kind of agree on map one, and then whoever ends up losing map one kind of picks map two, so on and so forth. That is not the case for tonight, as we actually do have the, the maps here that we can take a look at. And we were talking a little bit before we went live here. Like, what's weird about the way this is set up right now? Yeah, so Hugh has done something pretty interesting. Uh, not only do they have this uh, very preset map pool, um, but as opposed to what the normal standard is for Overwatch tournaments, where you see control first, then moving on to like hybrid and escort, they're actually going to be starting with the escort map first there in Rialto. And it should be pretty interesting to see how this plays, because Rialto is uh like and escort maps in general they are a map type that can be uh either very snowball-y or like very one-sided and uh rialto is of course no exception to that especially on that third point that can be a very very uh defender favored uh map and so oh, yeah. we can see how we'll we'll see how this kind of like affects the momentum going into the series right as opposed to like the control maps they're typically very even you typically have both sides uh, going at it from completely neutral standpoints, uh, you know, attacking and defending advantages, those are really only a thing when a team has control of the objective or not. Right. But uh, in Rialto, it definitely plays into it throughout the whole map, throughout the whole round. So we'll see if that changes anything. But, you know, uh, the players that we do have here, they are all playing at a very high level. And I'm sure that something like this, it might be a little strange to them, but it certainly won't be enough to throw them off their game, I'm imagining. Absolutely. I remember time and time again, we would see Rialto as usually game number three or, or two, like you're saying. And I know that second phase, like the streets phase, I believe, where there's that one building dead center mm -hmm. that you all would always just dogpile into, to be honest. Yeah, and their, just their throw point your two is very interesting because on point two, you have that very powerful high ground that has yeah. windows and outlooks over pretty much every part of the cart's path. The little and stairway on the side. That's exactly, so yeah. So you have to try some pretty risky things. If you get held there, you have to try some pretty risky things to try and clear that space and control that part of the map again. And especially like even just trying to cross that initial bridge going from point one into point two, it's it's you're really just crossing a no man's land there because no cover 
pretty much. And if you have, if the enemy team has like some solid long range damage, it's very easy to get picked off while trying to cross that. Hopefully that won't be an issue for the Saints though. And uh, you know, I'm sure they've been practicing a lot these past few weeks. I'm sure they have some interesting stuff in store. And you know, that's assuming that they even get held there. It's very possible that we see them play at such a good level that they just end up not even having to be held there and they just roll the cart there the whole way so we'll see how it goes mm -hmm. of course northeastern though they are still a very solid team and no I do, i'm not going to be expecting it to be a steamroll by any means for sure for sure i know like talking to the coach he's earlier today q of course he was confident but not cocky about the match going into tonight like definitely like feeling good about the players that he has on the roster of course going into this next semester but uh not like you said not expecting the steamroll by any means yeah and, and that's a good mentality to have right like if you go in overconfident if you expect it to be easy it's real easy to start making little mistakes and stuff that could end up snowballing into larger issues throughout the game so so long as they are going in with a you know a steady head on their shoulders i think we will we'll be seeing really good stuff tonight it was funny how we were talking about how the order of the maps being played today like through the uh it's a little bit different compared mm -hmm. to normal yes. competitive. Players even in the lobby right now are kind of debating on it for a second. It's like, oh, yeah, it's Nepal map one, right? It's like, actually, no. Uh, here's a rule set. It's like, wait a minute. This it, is odd. It is strange, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a nice change, though. It's interesting. It, it does keep things fresh. And, you know, for, for Overwatch 1 at this point, keeping things fresh is, is a very welcome thing to have, right? I'm sure. I know everybody is waiting on Overwatch 2 to come around. It's just, of course, right around the corner, like another couple months away. That being said, I think we're about to head into the game just about right here, right now. Of course, Rialto going to start us off here. And let's take a look at the, the rosters here for our first matchup. Of course, the Saints this time by newcomers, Ready. Squeak, Hyun, Emren, and Crime, and Rain, and Red X. This is actually a completely new roster we're seeing here today. And then on the side of Northeastern, whoa, Neats. SCL33 Scoop Timid and Spectro. Yeah, so interestingly enough, St. Clair College, they're gonna be they're gonna be starting off with all their new players right off the bat, and it should be interesting to see, you know, they're really focused on coming in, giving us a fresh look. And right off the bat, we're seeing that kind of typical comp for Rialto at this point. That very long range based double shield. Uh, all, it's all about controlling those long sight lines, controlling angles, putting down a ton of damage, Five. and we're actually seeing nearly a mirror. Right now, St. Clair, they do have Crime on the Cassidy, as opposed to Northeastern, who has Woe there on the Ash. So, St. Clair, not quite as much long-range damage, but if they get into a close quarters area, then we could see Crime making big use of that flashbang. Right away, we see St. Clair trying to make a rotation, trying to get under this high ground. Not going for the car movement just yet. Right now, they're trying to get this rotation to see if they can force Northeastern to try and... Uh, Stop putting down some of that damage on the cart. We just hiding under there right now. So we're gonna see if they can find these angles. Yeah, slowly but surely we are gonna see the Saints pull on through here up these stairways. As we can see though, it's going to be SCL up on the high ground here, really making things extremely difficult for the Saints to get themselves up. But have kind of forced them to drop down. Now the Saints all of a sudden are gonna get themselves a little bit of a push going here with a couple of eliminations under the belt. Yeah, really nice opening pick there from Dunn with that Sigma Rock. He managed to find a pick, and right now he's just cleaning up as well. You see him walking forward there with the Sigma Shield, and he's just being a force to be reckoned with. Pushed away all of Northeastern, and you can see what well, as soon as that high ground started, as soon as that kind of that bunker there on the high ground got broken, it was all St. Clair. They just started rolling through, and now they have all the car space. Northeastern might have a chance to touch here, and it does look like they're going to try. Yeah, one more opportunity to stop them at this first checkpoint. We are going to see Crime here, this time on the Hanzo, finding the first initial elimination here, taking Woe out right away. Right along with him for just a second. It's going to be the Mocha Core that's coming out here from Neat to try and slow this down. And to be fair, it did kind of hold the Saints off for just a little bit longer. It's going to be up to Emron and Squeak to try and finish this one off. But it does appear like the side of Seeker has been stopped. Northeastern going to at least save them from getting that first point. Yeah, that was a really nice tour boat there from Neats. It just managed to force everyone off the cart there, forced them back. And with everyone having to be forced back, Northeastern was able to push forward, and they found the angles they needed in order to start getting picks. Now, though, St. Clair College, we do see some really nice ults coming up. We have the Gravitic Flux. We'll have the Orisa Damage Booster, and as well as the tour bolts. And even the rally, so four ults to two here. It's gonna be it's gonna be really hard for Northeastern to hold this, but we'll have to see how they play it. St. Clair, they're just going on a long rotation right now, seeing if they can come around from this back angle, maybe try to contest that high ground. Another opening pick from Prime, that's really nice for him. 
And finally, shot for even get the opportunity to sneak on over to him and see what he's up to. But with this awkward little hold here coming out here, we're going to see if the Saints can break on through. That is going to be Hyun there with the uh, Sigma ulti. And it's going to make things extremely difficult for uh, Side Northeastern to really hold on to. As we can see, the Saints essentially just plowing through this. One more. Granted, crime is going to end up going down. But the Saints have done more than enough to get on through here. Just a matter of time. Just got to deal with Neats. And they should be on their way through these streets phase. Yeah, Neats went on a really interesting angle there, almost rotating towards St. Clair spawn. But unfortunately, uh, with that Hanzo, the arrows were just able to take out the turrets and just pressure him back, so he didn't get quite too much done there. And Crime was able to sit up on that high ground, just spamming down damage. And the rest of his team, of course, they were able to take advantage of that and just clean up. And we see now St. Clair, they're playing smart. They're trying to take this high ground. They don't want to let Northeastern set up here because they know that if they do get set up, it's going to be really hard for them to break. So they're right away pushing through there. Dragons coming from behind from Crime, they are going to be pushing people off. But unfortunately, the Immortality Field saves them. Squeak does manage to trade, though. And now they're going to start pushing onto this staircase. So Bob comes out, as well as a window. Lots of ults coming out between here. And it does look like St. Clair is going to be the ones who have to back out. High ground position, just very, very strong for Northeastern. However, Rain actually does pick up Scoop. This could open up a chance to re-engage. But it actually forces out the Torbolt there from Nice. And he's going to clean up. He's going to push him back. And even though that is a lost fight from St. Clair, I think that's really good because uh, really early on, we saw some picks come out from the side of Northeastern, and the fact that they were able to drag it out long enough to force out that Torbolt, that's going to be really good for them. I was going to say, there was a lot of ultimates used in that fight there for the side of Northeastern. Granted, looking at the Saints side of things as well, they don't really have too much in the pocket. It is going to just be Redix there with the rally, of course. But oh, a nice pick on the second. Sigma. They pulled him off that high ground. He's going to have to retreat back a bit, and this could be the chance for St. Clair to move in. But unfortunately, oh. Crime got picked off, and that's that bridge we were talking about, right? So hard to cross that against this long-range damage. So easy to get picked off. Unfortunately, we did see it happen right there. St. Clair, though, they're still going to try and fight this. We see the rally coming out from Red X. I'm surprised. And now, they're, he's in a brawl with the Orisa there on the ground. Very, very low, okay. and Hyun managed to clean him up. Now, from pushing forward, we see the Grimmit and Flux come out. And now St. Clair looking in a very good position here to take this. The Transcendence does come out to Northeastern, but it might not be enough to hold it there. I'm actually so surprised that they even pushed forward with that. They were a player down, they hit the rally anyway and just sent it and was able to get the rest of Northeastern off of this section. They now have pretty much all the map control they could want. They can kind of pinned here underneath this bridge and make it extremely awkward. We see Squeak here going to be picking up the Wrecking Ball here. Just make himself extremely annoying. Neat's going to try again, though. Has had some decent success with the Molten Core so far here in this game, but it's actually going to be Crime yet again with, like, three quick picks, four quick wow, picks! Crime and that was off. nuts! Yeah, that was on the back there of a beautiful bap window from Rain. Up on that high ground, Crime swapped off the Hanzo to the Widow, comes in for that fight, sits behind the window, and just starts finding all the shots, and... You know, when you're putting Widowmaker shots through a Baptiste window, they're doing so, so much damage. And you can see Northeastern just got shredded. And with no one really to contest him, he was able to do everything he wanted. And now he's actually swapped again, and we're going to see him on the Ash this time. Conversely, though, Woe has swapped off the Ash and is now going to the Tracer. Yeah, looking for a little bit of speedy flanker kind of plays here, but it's just so weird to see, like... Crime switches, gets a pop-off moment on Widow, and it's like, you know, I, I've done my job with this character. It's time to switch on over. Meanwhile, it's going to be Scoop on the side of Northeastern. The rest of the squad as well just absolutely shred through the Saints. So I guess a bit of an alt-building fight here for the Saints as they do fall pretty quickly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, fortunately, Northeastern was able to find that early pick there, which led to them being able to take advantage of their high mobility comp. They just started swarming around and finding the picks. But now St. Clair, they're coming back in. They'll have the rally, and Hyun very close there to that Sigma ult. Those two ults are what won them that fight there on the second point, so we'll see if they can do it again this time. It should be right around the corner here. We do see the turret there from Nizam. It's a little bit difficult, but with that rally, it is go time here for the Saints once again. The Flux is going to come on through and stop the Saints for a second, but it seems like everybody is still in good health, good spirits. Again, trying to dang this. He does have his ultimate available, but with the way that Northeastern is playing right now, it wasn't necessarily too good up until just the moment that the Sigma goes down. Now they're really willing to bunch things up and just throw it as a death ball kind of style. Oh, and it's just death ball from Whoa. Crazy. Yeah, very solid stuff there from both those teams. We saw the uh, 
Gravitic Flux come out from the side of Northeastern first. Unfortunately, it was able to be a pretty decent counter there to the rally from Red X. And once uh, landing, Hyun, he just got completely engaged by uh, SL33 and Wo. You could see they were harassing him super hard. He was discorded as well, so he really had no chance to get his own Gravitic Flux off. But that does mean that St. Clair now has three ults coming into this fight. Possibly four if he Squeak is going to be able to get this uh, Supercharger off online. He probably will at 90%. So St. Clair, they're going to have a lot of ults for this and nothing for Northeastern. This should be pretty good for them. And yeah, Mulcore is going to start things off right away here with Nates, but he's actually going to get taken out extremely quickly as well. Bob did come in there from crime, but basically got thrown out right as he went down himself. So the numbers advantage not going to necessarily work in their favor. Red X here trying to get this point cleared off to so maybe get a little bit of space available. The rally is not going to get its justice, though, as it's going to be scooped, find himself the double kill, and just even more so with that overtime ticking down. But it looks like the Saints are kind of stuck. The emergency tracer coming on through here from crime, but that is like a five on one. I don't care how good you are, you're probably not making it back there alive. So it looks like the side of Northeastern are going to be successful at defending the third point at least, but still, solid push from the Saints. Yeah, St. Clair, of course, doing an amazing job. And it's kind of like we talked about earlier, that third point on Rialto is kind of like famous for being very difficult to attack. It's very defender favored. And Northeastern, you gotta give them credit, they did play their comp very well. Like, uh, SL33 there on that ball, and Will on that tracer, they were doing a great job of just splitting St. Clair's attention. They were forcing Red X to, like, constantly be looking behind, constantly having to throw armor, look for the tracer to bash and whip shot her away. And that just meant that Squeak and Hyun were kind of left to their own devices on the front line. And unfortunately, that split fire was just a bit too much for St. Clair to overcome. But still, very good push from them. And of course, we saw some great pop-off moments from Crime. And and so now we'll see if we can get a repeat performance of that on the defense. Because if he's hitting shots like he was there on that Widowmaker on this defense, it's going to be very hard for Northeastern to push. All right, one more time here. Let's get to see how the our Saints do on the defensive side of things. Looking at the team composition right now, I'm seeing Sombra already. This has me a little bit excited there. How often do we see Sombra lately? Yeah, Sombra isn't isn't a hugely popular pick, but de she definitely has her niche. Uh, what we're probably going to be seeing here, we're probably going to be seeing uh, Emerin using this Sombra in order to uh, kind of make sure that uh, Tanks and the uh, Baptiste there are not able to really use their abilities in the way they want. We're going to be looking for a lot of disabling coming out there from that Sombra. And especially, we also see the Diva coming out from St. Clair. So they're not actually running the double shield, they're running the Cerisa Diva comp. And the Cerisa is going to, should enable them at least to have a lot more cart control. Because uh, if the cart ends up getting too close to that corner, the Diva can drop down, contest cart, fly back up, control that high ground, no problem. Now we see Northeastern, they're looking for a rotation, seeing if they can get... Oh, Ooh, a nice combo there from Emerin and Yun in order to take out Meats. Now Crime takes out SL33. Scoop does trade on to Crime, but Squeak and Hyun manage to clean it up. And now Northeastern is going to have to reset here. Really well played there from St. Clair. Holy smokes, he just straight up dove on top of him. That was just such a clean and quick way to do it. And I love the fact that it looked like Emerin and Hyun were both pretty much right on the same page. As soon as you dive, I dive right alongside you. And normally when I think of a dive comp, I'm usually thinking it's probably like three or four people really going at it. For but sure, yeah. just like a pair of divers that still got the job done. Yeah, some, sometimes all you need is to turn a 1v1 into a 2v1, and from there, the rest of the fight just falls into place. And that's exactly what we saw happen. You see Emran again, just hiding there in wait, looking for an opportunity to get that dive. SL33 does take down Rain, and this could be pretty bad for Saints, but they do manage to trade. Emran takes out Wo, and now St. Clair, they're going to be seeing if they can clean this up. A rally coming out from Red X, that's actually going to be huge. That's going to get St. Clair all the sustain they need to make sure they can push right into that room. They charge forward and just end up wiping out Northeastern. Wow, just completely locking them down once again. This time, basically everybody making the dive off of the platform, but was able to get the job done once again. And just again with this uh, somber pick there from Amber and just kind of calling the shots, so to speak, with uh, the vision and team information, basically, to say the least. For sure, yeah. So now it's going to be on Northeastern. They have the ults coming up here. They have the dragon. We just, what Northeastern is going to be trying uh -oh. to do here is they want to put the deep out of mech. is actually back in mech now. Oh, a huge EMP coming out from Emerin. Finds five people. The follow up is there onto SL33. However, Wo does take out Emerin. And now we see the Transcendence coming up from the side of Northeastern. Hyun is over here in their backline trying to find a pick, but unfortunately the Transcendence healing is just too much. And while that's happening, Scoop's on the front line. He's just fine. He's found four picks now. Really well done from the side of Northeastern there, despite that huge EMP from Emerin. 
Unfortunately, the MP just ended up being a bit of a countermeasure, but it did not really slow things down for the slightest there for the side of Northeastern. They were able to get through just fine. They're going to be probably challenged right here one more time, right underneath the bridge. We do see Squeak leading the charge. Gion is actually going to find a quick kill, and they do have a dragon for themselves as well to at least bait out the invulnerability. Diva Bomb also on field there. That's from Gion. Not going to find anybody, but it doesn't look like they're going to necessarily need it as the rest of the Saints are just shredding on through. Yeah. We, saw, we see, actually see a really interesting strat here coming out from St. Clair. Uh, they knew that they would be taking this contest there at the corner, and so they knew that it would be turning into a close-range brawl. And in order to facilitate that, Emran actually swapped to the Symmetra. Symmetra, of course, very powerful against double shield due to her primary fire that can charge up on those shields and uh, actually be charging ammo as well when she's shooting shields. So a really smart swap there coming out from St. Clair. And it looks like Emran is going to be sticking to this. And he's 70% to a Symmetra wall, so this could be very, very good for St. Clair. Northeastern, they've also had some swaps coming out. Swapping to more of a dive-based comp with that ball and that Diva. We'll see if they can use it. But Hyun, he's going in deep okay. and actually does find a pick. He does get DMAC, but we'll see if it ends up being worth it. it. They can't kill the baby Diva. Finally, the headshot is there. But Hyun was able to get that Ash out from Wo, which means there's no Bob, which means Northeastern does have to wait for Wo to get back in order to make this engage. And St. Clair, they have the spawn advantage right now, so they can kind of just chill at this corner. But Emran gets taken out by a headshot from Neats. This could be very difficult for St. Clair now. Yeah, it's going to get awkward. We are going to see the dragon come on through. It's going to just force everybody off the point for the most part. Nothing but Tian left on the point for just a second. Bob's even getting in here, making things just that much more difficult. We have Prime there. Deadeye is not going to quite find its mark. It looks like, never mind, it's a double kill. What am I on today? My goodness, he's going to find himself a triple. And he basically Basically, make that a quadra. He just stopped this in its tracks. Crime showing off his oh. aiming skills there in the final few seconds of that fight. Really nice stuff, including some really nice macro play. Like we saw that Hyun, he dived in deep and he was able to find a Nordic pick, which stalled out the fight long enough to make that last fight go into overtime. It made sure that uh, Northeastern, they weren't able to engage when they really wanted to. Yeah, he ended up getting losing his life for it. But with the spawn advantages taken into account, that's a definitely a very good trade. And then we saw a couple of nice picks from Neats. You know, he took out that Symmetra early. But as soon as uh, Emran respawned, you, we saw him throw up that um, the Symmetra wall. And that enabled Crime to pull out that Deadeye kind of free, right? You know, he can't mm -hmm. shoot through a wall that big. So he's able to stand there, stand back on the bridge. Anyone who tries to touch the cart, they're going to be in view of that Deadeye. And he's able to find a quick 2k with the Deadeye. And from there, it's just a matter of cleaning up. Yeah, that was remarkable. I know... Personally, yeah, he, he got the dead eye out pretty like, quickly and cleanly, but I didn't expect nothing of it. I'm just so used to... Um... <laughs> The dead eyes just being whipped out. Yeah, Something a lot of times a reloading tool. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest, but for for him to get the double that time by, and then just to clean up with the rest of the squad, what a way to finish it! And it looks like actually they're not going to waste too much time here. I was thinking about maybe throwing this one to the break. Well, they just gave me the never mind. So, still solid, very first game here in this best of three. Saints now have match points. Of course, we are going to be playing both of our sets in today versus northeastern so even if this does become a 2-0 there's still more games to come but the way that first game was as soon as that first point got broken it felt like it could have gone either way but at the same time Things are looking good so far. Yeah, especially there on that defense. Like, we did see on the tack, they ended up not managing to find the full cap, but they did get the full hold on that defense. And that, you know, it speaks volumes, surely. And we saw such good, like, coordination and stuff come out from them, too. Like, especially mm -hmm. early on while Emran was still on that Sombra. Mm -hmm. He and Hyun were just, they were look, finding such great opportunities to get these early picks and start mm -hmm. the fight. And the rest of the Saints, they were taking great advantage of that. And that was why they ended up holding at that first corner for so long. And sure, eventually that corner was broken, but then we saw some very quick thinking, some quick swaps coming out, and it just paid off so well to get them that full hold. And if that's kind of like, if that's what we can see from the rest of these maps, I'm really excited. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, going into Nepal now, this is, of course, the map we usually see first in this kind of situation, or the control style that we're kind of used to seeing, with about a couple of extra hazards and more prominent environmental problems for sure to kind yeah. of deal with here what do you see happening with this game 
Honestly, from the side of St. Clair, I think we could see a lot of things. Because just in this first game, we saw a, so many looks from them. Like, Crime played, I want, like, I want to say six or seven different heroes. We saw him on the uh, the Widowmaker, the Ash. Yeah. We saw him on the Sombra, the Symmetra. Like, he, he was almost playing mystery heroes there. And he was looking great on each and every one of his picks, right? So, like, job specific, too. Like, I just can't help but go back to where he had the Widow. Like, you normally switch to the Widow, gets like a 4K, I believe, and just switches off and like, I, okay, I, I would, did my job. <laughs> I would not be surprised if the only reason he swapped to that Widow was in order to try and combo with that Baptiste Window. Like, if they were, like I would hmm. I would bet money that there was a call, yo, we'll put Baptiste Window up on the high ground, all you got to do is hit your shots, and we win. And Crime, he's got good aim. Absolutely. He knows he can hit his shots, so he's like, let's do it, picks the Widow, and he just demolished there on the end of that second point. So, given... That um, given how many like DPS, uh, or I should say, given how much DPS flexibility we're seeing from Saint Clair, I think we could see some really interesting comps coming out here on Nepal. Potentially some Farah comps, maybe some Sombra Tracer dive, or maybe we even see some like classic brawl on maps like Village, right? Um, so I think it'll be really interesting to see what exactly they're pulling out. Uh, from the side of Northeastern, they did seem to favor the more classic comps. Like, we saw them typically run either just the normal double shield or they swap to, like, a ball tracer comp. Mm. And so it doesn't seem like um, Northeastern is wanting to be as experimental as St. Clair is. They want to stick to what's typically the more traditional comps. And on a map like Nepal, it could end up working well for them, but it, it all depends on, like, what kind of stuff St. Clair is planning to roll out with. Absolutely. We're not going to have to wait very long to figure that out. We are going to be loading into game number two in just a moment's time. Now, personally, whenever I got to have the greatest mistake of playing DPS in Overwatch, I was a Farah main. I want to see some Farah on that one uh, hit kind of thing. I'm, I'm, uh, yes. I'm not 100% sure exactly yeah, what Nepal it's called. Yeah, Nepal Sanctum. That's, the Sanctum. That's, that's the it. map with uh, the big hole there on the one side of the map. Yes. And we'll have to see if we end up getting there. The first point is going to be uh, Nepal Shrine here. Uh, this is, of course, a very interesting map uh, because... Uh, the way the point is formatted, you can kind of play it one of two ways. Uh, it has a lot of openings, which means that uh, picks like Farah, Ash, uh, you know, very aerial characters are very popular. And we're seeing right away, we see an Echo, we see a Farah coming out hey, from, there we go. from St. Clair. <laughs> and I was going to say that it is, you can run Brawl and see some very some pretty decent success here due to the fact that there are lots of like corners, lots of angles that you can use, especially like with May walls and stuff. But both teams, they're going to be opting for this fast-paced dive Comp, the long range comp. You see the Farah. Uh, the Symmetra picks here probably just going to be used to TP the rest of the team out, and then we'll probably see them swap to a Sombra or a Tracer or something like that. And yep. yeah, we do yeah. see Tracer swaps from both sides. So we have a Tracer Echo versus a Tracer Farah. This is going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. And of course, the support lines as well. St. Clair, they're going to be on the Ana, whereas Northeastern is on the Brig Zen. Brig Zen, a very classic tried and true comp, very difficult to dive on. We'll have to see how St. Clair manages to push into this. Emran, he's up in the air right now, trying a little bit to duel that Echo. Not quite finding a shot, but that's all right, because he now he's just putting pressure onto the point, seeing if he can uh, these picks. A nice purple. Oh. Ooh, a nice volley. Almost took him out. He does manage to live, though. Red X just making sure that he's staying on his back, keeping him healed up. Rain there on that high ground. A really nice position from him. Can't really be contested by the Tracer. They're going to have to commit resources to get to him. And now Kian, he's just moving on, taking control of the point. Well, everyone's looking at the Fair and the Ana. He can move in. Crime wins the Tracer duel against Wo. Now... St. Clair, they're going to be looking to control this. A nice dive comes out to make the Zen. Emrin did go down, but that hardly matters when St. Clair is looking so clean here. I mean, they were all so focused on the dogfight that was basically happening in the skies that the ground army there from the Saints were able to just clean out right up there. We saw both Squeak and Yun just push on forward, and by the time that Northeastern really reacted to it, it did get ousted, and... Right away, we're seeing Emran actually getting off of the Farah and just opting to go back towards something more ground-based here with the Soldier. Yeah, Emran is looking like he's just had a ooh, nice Got early him. pick from Crime. Northeastern, they're going to have to just back all the way out. They don't want any part of pushing in right now. A Valkyrie coming out from Red X here. 
It looks like they think Northeastern is still going to push in, but Northeastern, they're just going to buy their time. And this Valkyrie, you know, that could be facilitating that. They don't want to push into a Valkyrie, so they're just going to wait. This is a free 15 seconds here for St. Clair. But yeah, like we were saying, Emran there on that soldier, he just wants to make Echo have no fun playing the game. He wants to pressure her out, make sure she can't do anything. Looking for the Tracer here on the side, but whoa, he's just kind of skating around there, trying to stay hidden. He does have a Pulse Bomb, he'll be looking for it. But Hyun with an early pick on the SL33. The Pulse Bomb comes out, does manage to find rain, and Crime goes down to scoop. But now it's going to be on Northeastern to see if they can follow up on these picks and keep the momentum going. Redex does get the res onto the Ana. So now both teams here, very even in numbers. Emran with a pick onto the Echo. That's what we're talking about. That's what you run the Soldier for. Now Rain with a pick onto Timid. Squeak pushing forward, takes out Scoop. Hun is just going to be walking forward now. And yeah, wow. Zenyatta gets deleted. The balls, they're just kind of playing ping pong there in that side room. And yeah, he gets chased down. Man, absolutely incredible stuff coming out here from the Saints so far. This is the second time what feels like 10 minutes where I've thought to myself, okay, this fight is lost. They're probably going to give this one up, right? Wait, they just blew two ultimates? Maybe I'm completely wrong. How did they win that fight? It just seems to be my train of thought. That being said, though, three ultimates on deck here for this side of Northeastern, but it could get very well shut down. Yeah. Woe does take out range. This could be a very big first pick. But Emran, he's up on that high ground. He's got a great angle. He's just going to be raining down damage. However, Hyun goes down now as well. And Northeastern, they have used that copy. With two members down on the side of Sinclair, make that three members. Yeah, Northeastern is going to cap this point. Emran in and Red X, they're just going to try and back away. Northeastern trying to chase him down, though. We'll see if they can get out safely. Nothing. And looks like they are. Hey. Not too many more things falling in that engage, so not too bad in that regard. Rain to keep himself alive as well. And okay, so Northeastern on the board getting some percent for the time being. But let's take a look at the alt kills here. It's just the Valkyrie and the Pulse Bomb. Of course, still absolutely oh, to do some tracer damage, ball then. especially if they can find the Zenyatta. Beautiful dive. They're coming out from Squeak and Crimes just to leap that Zen. And now with a support down on the side of Northeastern, St. Clair, they're going to be able to do a lot here. They're just going to be looking for picks. A beautiful one clip there onto Woe from Crime. And now they're just going to be moving on to the pick. Emran is completely enabled. He's able to move up and start putting down tons of shots. We actually see a Lucio swap coming up from the side of Northeastern. They know that they're in dire straits. they got to swap to try and contest. Well, you can see Emran. He's just kind of bullying this Lucio, looking for him. A sleep comes out. He can't even touch. Now the D.Va from Northeastern is going to try and make the touch, Oh, but he gets lifted up. Oh, Northeastern still managing to put members onto this point here, but at this point it feels like a very futile effort. As St. Clair, they're just kind of playing with their food. They're just building their ults. They're just slowly cleaning up, getting these picks. And yeah, Northeastern, it's all they can do to just keep the overtime going at this point. The Lucio is back on the point. The ball is still alive, rolling around. But St. Clair, they're just in cleanup mode. And it's in just, just a second... There Overtime it goes. burns down, and there it is. First point going the way of St. Clair. Okay, so a little bit of a trickle fest at the very, very end there, but so not bad. Zero, the Saints able two, to recuperate extremely quickly after dropping the point for just a moment's time. But that's very, very solid. I like the quick switches, the quick thinking coming out there from the Saints. Maybe yeah. stopping the sky play, going back to our more grounded focus one. Neats there on the Echo wasn't doing like too bad per se, but just was not quite finding the impact I think they were hoping for. Definitely not, no. And as we go into the second point here, it is going to be Nepal Village. And this is kind of what we talked about, where we see that classic brawl coming out. We are going to see that. We're going to see the Rhine, the D.Va. Inside of both teams, it looks like we see mirror matches coming out. Uh, we actually see St. Clair sticking with the Cassidy as opposed to the May. So this is going to be a bit of an interesting year. Sacrificing the utility to May Wall in order to have that flash and potentially a bit more straight up frontline damage. And some really nice speeding there from St. Clair is going to put them onto control of the point first. So now that May Wall that Northeastern was hoping to utilize isn't even going to get the chance. And St. Clair, they're just going to charge on forward and run wow. them down. Yeah, absolutely mowed on over there. It's nothing but the support line and the Baby Diva left here on the side of Northeastern. And they get quickly dealt with here like no big deal nicely done gonna get some percent on the board nice and quick here and just everybody was on the same page they waited for their tanks they dove on in and was able to just find the critical target for sure yeah and you saw st Clair. like the biggest thing they're missing out on there with their comp is not having a may wall or having to deal with that may wall from the side of northeastern and this is what northeastern is trying to do right now they want to get onto the point okay. and use the may wall in order to isolate themselves and everybody's side chatter comes out from squeak but it is blocked now we see the baptiste window coming out there from the side of northeastern fire strike goes through it not enough to get a final pick squeak does charge in and he finds a pick onto timid and emeryn finds a pick onto sl33 and Deeper Bomb comes out as well. Emran finds another 
pick. He's rocking forward. DPS for St. Clair doing so well right now at finding these picks. And despite that quick little flip there from the side of Northeastern, uh -oh. St. Clair <laughs> is able to flip it right back. And now we see a bit of a brutal stagger coming out here onto the Baby Diva of Northeastern. It's been a while since I saw a staggered Baby Diva. I'm fortunate to see the least there. Just finished the job. Nope, we're killing time. But by killing all that time, they now have three ultimates on deck, with the only one on the side of Northeastern being the Shatter, which, of course, I mean, you're very, very well aware that one of the more game-changing ultimates in the game. For sure, yeah. However, we do see that Woe and Timid are both very close to those also. Good chance we'll see it come out in the mid-fight. Oh. However, an interesting strategy from Northeastern. They tried to TP straight up onto there and it go for a Shatter. It didn't quite work. Squeak just ended up pinning him straight back, took down his shield, and Prime was able to clean him up with a Deadeye. And from there, the rest of the Saints, they just walked straight in and ended up cleaning up the fight. And you can see they're still going, they were going right past the choke point. And they're kind of, they're gonna, at this point, it's looking like they might end up spawn camping Northeastern. <laughs> That's probably one of the first times I've seen the pin into a dead eye combo actually work on the Reinhardt. That's that is interesting to say at least there, but it's one way to eliminate the tank. But now, Northeastern, they're the ones with all the utility. They have four alts on deck, and we're going to see them nice Ooh, and quick. Hyun with the mail eat really big oh. on the side of there. Scoop does manage to chase down Red X, but right now, it does look like these teams are very close to going even right now. Maywall's coming out, or Simwall, sorry, coming out from both sides. Emerin is able to find one, make that two picks. He's going to be very high charge right now, looking to move forward. Hyun moving forward as well, trying to chase down these DPS, and that healer's in the back line. Timid is in the back as well. He managed to take out Rain, but unfortunately, St. Clair, it's all them right now. They're just cleaning up, and we see a team kill coming out to finish this. Wow. And St. Clair win the first series 2 nothing with a 2 nothing on the control as well. Yeah, that was a very, very dominant-looking second game there. While the first one may have felt a little bit more... We actually see a play of the game like, here yeah, from Red X. Alicio play of the game, and it was basically Red X going full DPS mode here on the Lucio, which we do not get to see that often here from Lucios in general. But it's good to see a little bit of credit being thrown Red X's way. For sure, yeah. It's not often you see a Lucio play of the game that isn't just one or two uh, oh, one like or two environmental kills, yeah. but you know you saw it there. He was frontlining. He was playing the Reddit Lucio play style. We like to call it right. The Reddit Just Lucio. Trying to get enough. the clips. Trying to trying to get those headshots in. Trying to show up on the kill feed as much as possible. And I mean, it clearly it, it worked to some extent. Like when you have the Lucio playing that aggressively and like playing like that, not only do you have a great advantage in terms of like speed boost and in terms of controlling the tempo, but you're also adding in a lot more damage, even if it's just like, just simple stuff like boops and stuff, that's preventing the enemy from retreating, that's putting them in into positions they don't want to be, that's making it way harder for Northeastern to do what they want to do, so really nice gameplay there, coming out from Redix on the Lucio. Mm, I also want to give a lot of credit there to Hyun for that very, very final push that we saw from Northeastern. They had all these ultimates in line, and it would have been a brutal combo had that blizzard actually got yeah. the opportunity eating to that go, blizzard was but definitely just scooped it knew it was coming got it that was that was a crucial moment no there. cc because especially on a map like village uh an ult like blizzard is it, it covers a huge area and when you have a point like village that's almost entirely enclosed mm -hmm. putting something like blizzard or diva bomb onto a point like that it pretty much makes it so that you can no longer stand on that point for right. until the ult is done but if Hyun eats that, he just says, no, we're keeping this point. We're going to stand here as long as we want. And that's exactly what we saw. We saw the sim wall come up. And then Emerin, well, he was just able to get his beam up to high charge. Squeak was able to walk in, swing his hammer. And Saints, they just took it and ran with it. And they just started rolling. And it definitely helped just all of them being right on the exact same page. But with that... That's not going to be the end of our matches here today as we're going to play Northeastern again in another best of three because the Hue Invitational, of course, this is a double round robin, but we only really had like a week to do it. So a lot of the teams are opting just for belting out two matches essentially back to back, but we are going to send it to about a five minute break, but we're going to basically clean the slate. Saints are going to be, of course, one up in the league itself, but they're going to restart at 0-0 and we'll see what happens coming then but it'll be about a five minute break so please do stay tuned
All right, welcome back, everyone. We're going to be jumping right into game here from the, uh, going into the second match of the series here. And we're just going back. We're going to be kind of running it back, so to speak. It's going to be back on Rialto, uh, St. Clair, and Northeastern, both running very similar comps to what we saw them run the first time around. So this is going to, this is going to be pretty interesting. You know, a situation like this isn't something you see very often. And... It'll be interesting to see how exactly it plays out. Is Northeastern going to be able to immediately adapt to their shortcomings from the first round? Or is it just going to be a repeat performance from St. Clair? Who can really say at this point? This is a first for me and I'm sure a first for the players as well. So we'll have to see how it pans out. Yeah, never have I ever seen a tournament of sorts other than maybe FGC where there's the run back immediately after you've just played. Yeah. Like, normally you think of, like, a bra bracket reset or something like that, but no, this is group stage. Yeah, especially on that. the exact same maps. And, you know, right away, we're kind of seeing... You're getting a bit of a sense of deja vu here with uh, Emrin pushing that car and the rest of St. Clair going for this rotation under the high ground. We'll see if it plays out differently this time, though. And, of course, one thing we did figure out during the break, of course, rain there on the Baptiste. I was wondering why I thought the style seemed familiar. That is, in fact, Arjun. That is also known as Earth Jump from last semester, just with a different tag. So that's why I was a little bit confused, to say the least. But, of course, good seeing one of our fellow scenes still back in action here. Yeah. We see the same just plowing through this one. Yeah. SL3, he, he was trying to get the cart contest on that corner there, but unfortunately he was kind of left to his own devices. Northeastern didn't really have the follow-up support for him, so he didn't really receive any heals, and St. Clair, they were able to walk forward and they just bursted him down, and now they're going to have a lot of space. And you can see, they don't even want to let Northeastern take mm -hmm. another test here. They want to hold him at the spawn. The back window coming out there from Rain or Arjun, and they're just going to be holding them literally in their spawn right now, just past that doorway. That is Northeastern spawn, so they don't want to let them out. That's 3 3 tried to walk out and he got immediately deleted and St. Clair, they're just going to walk the cart right onto the checkpoint. Yeah, they just left one or two people to go deal with it. Everybody else was on the bridge. We're so used to the bridge being a defensive, like, point of contention for the, the defensive side of teams. But if anything, the Saints just used it as their breaking point, basically. Pretty much, yeah. This That long-range spawn camp we saw, it definitely was a bit risky, but it paid off huge for them there. And now we see St. Clair, they're going to be trying to get the control of this high ground. But Northeastern, they're responding by using the back window of their own. That damage, St. Clair doesn't want to deal with it, so they drop off. They are willing to give up that space, but they're still getting the car control. So now it's going to be on Northeastern to see if they can take advantage of this high ground. But SL33, he was on the ground. He was on the low ground. He got taken out. Now we see response coming up from Northeastern. Bob comes out. Torbolt comes out. And it looks like with those two ults, it is going to be maybe going to be enough to give them the control here. And yeah, it is. Northeastern walks forward. They find the cleanup. And St. Clair, they are going to have to just get a quick reset in here. I mean, Neitz is basically picking this up where he left off. A lot of the defense from game number one of the last series did seem to rely a lot on that Torbjorn, on that Molten Core to really like keep the Saints at bay. But they get the opportunity again, do basically the exact same thing. Saints looking to go through the building once again, but of course this choke point is absolutely brutal to try yeah. to deal with. Well, we do need to mention though, looking over at the side of Saints, we see six ults on them. Oh pretty gosh, pretty yeah. much. Ooh, but a nice pull combo from the side of Northeastern does take out Prime early, but St. Clair, they still want to push this. They know they have an ult advantage, so they're going to try and push this in. They use the Griffith Flux and the Torbolt, and it might be enough. Now we see the rally coming out as well. They're going to keep pushing forward. Northeastern using the Supercharger to respond. Both teams now kind of just fighting over this corner, and it is going to be Northeastern coming out on top that supercharger damage just a little too much for St. Clair to handle and they do start getting taken out. Yeah they just brute force it there with that supercharger gonna clean everything up very very quickly after that it looked even at first but no even with the four ultimates drained on the side of the Saints Northeastern able to defend. Yeah, you do need to pay a lot of respect to Northeastern there. That that quick disengage in order to use the bongo to re-engage was really well played from them. And of course, that early pick on the prime did kind of set them up for success there. And now we see the infamous bridge once again, especially oh, no. shooting through a back window. Oh. It's, he's basically a day at the shooting range for Woe. He's just looking at the targets out in the open. He's finding the picks on them. And, you know... It, it's like we we talked about so many times. This bridge is a no man's land. It is very very hard to cross. Uh, fortunately though, Northeastern did have to use that Baptiste window in order to stop them from crossing it. So now St. Clair, they do have a chance to see if they can safely get across this. But an early flux comes out, doesn't find anyone. It only found Squeak, but he had that fortify in order to get him out. And now we see immortality fields being used uh, from the side of St. Clair, 
and it looks like they're just gonna they're just gonna back out. They're just gonna play a little bit safe, wait for their cooldowns, wait for their abilities, and then they're gonna try and push again. And a lot of times during game number one of the first match, we did see a lot of these uh, initial fights start off with Prime getting a really, really quick pick. And maybe not the windows out here. One of these Hanzo shots could very well do the trick. Bob's going to make things a little bit difficult, however, for both the DPS force to kind of put their uh, focus elsewhere for just a little bit longer. And it's just enough time for the Molten Core to come out. Oh, uh, SL33 and Neats putting down ton damage onto that bridge. Prime, he was playing that long angle like the Hanzo was supposed to do, but unfortunately, the rest of the team, they were going for a close rotation, so it meant that Northeastern, they pretty much only had one target to look at. That was the Hanzo, and they took him out quick. And from there, they just decided to kite back and re-engage there on Saints as they were trying to push onto that card. And now Saints, they're looking like they're going to be sent back to spawn. Hyun, seeing if he can maybe put down a bit more damage, but does get taken out. And now we actually see a compositional swap here coming out from the side of Saints. Or maybe not. Squeaky, who was on that ball for a second, but it looks like he'll be going back to the Orisa. And Emerin, however, is going to stick with his swap. And we're seeing the Symmetra come back. I mean, when you do get held up like at a brick wall like this, it does sometimes tempt you to make Another that switch. Another pick there coming out. Wow. Northeastern. Northeastern is doing a great job of comboing damage into their pulls as St. Clair is crossing this bridge. St. Clair, they tried to use the teleporter in order to kind of nullify the chances of that happening, but Northeastern was just too quick and they found a pick. St. Clair, though, however, they are going to keep committing. We've seen success with these kind of pushes before. The rally comes out, but Reddix gets taken out. That rally gets taken out, which means Woe is able to find Hyun. Needs is able to find Squeak. Prime did find a pick there on a Timid and actually uses the dragon Dragons as well, but unfortunately, St. Clair, they've already lost too many members. Northeastern, they have a very strong full hold right now, and they're just going to push St. Clair back. Absolutely, an incredible turn of events here, as Northeastern has been putting on a fantastic defense here in the street space. The only thing that I do worry about is if Saints end up getting locked down here, as far as they've pushed, it is still technically enough yeah. to win it Ooh, if they match. A nice boot coming up from Squeak. He actually managed to knock that Sigma off the high ground, and now a teleporter is going to come out down there. Seemed like it was just a, uh, a turret bomb. Didn't do too, too much, but it did force Northeastern back a little bit. And with some nice pressure coming up from Squeak, he's just doing a great job of pushing Northeastern back with booping their members all over the place. And we see a C9! Oh, no. I didn't even realize. Oh, in a tragic turn of events... For the Saints, they ended up not touching the cart. Despite the fact that there was a good potential for them to be able to win that, Northeastern did find an opening pick, but St. Clair, we've seen them turn those fights before, and that's very unfortunate for Saints. However, they hopefully they do not let that get to them, and they are able to go into this next round. Northeastern, though, they did have an incredible showing this time around compared to the first time we saw this map. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, last time by, we were, what, all the way down, almost towards point three, where they, or they already got locked down. It was just, like, around here. But, same time, like I was saying a little bit before, I still do kind of worry here for Northeastern, because it wasn't necessarily that their defense was bad. In fact, let's say they're in match one, their defense was still solid. It's just that their attack, attack got shot down immediately. immediately. They hardly... Like, I don't think they even necessarily got point number one. Yeah, or they, if they did, did get it was full, just for They second. got full held there on uh, the first time around. And mm. we'll see if, if St. Clair is able to pull that off again, then, you know, that C9 won't even end up mattering because the same Northeastern, they'll never be, even be getting close to that. But Northeastern, now they're going to know, they're going to kind of have an idea of what St. Clair's gameplay and is. They're going to be on the lookout for that Sombra. They're going to be knowing that uh, Hyun and Emerin like going for these dives onto potentially isolated targets. But right away, we see St. Clair actually swap it up a bit rather than holding on that uh, high ground with the long sight lines, they're going to be holding inside this little stairwell here, and they're probably going to be looking to try and rush out onto the back of one of Emerin's hacks, so we'll see how they play this out. It does look like Northeastern have scouted them out. Here comes the charge out. The pulls come out, shields come out. They do manage to isolate a target, but the lamp is there, and Northeastern quickly regroups. Now the lamp comes out from the side of St. Clair. Both lamps down now, so now both teams are very vulnerable. We see Hyun over, and Hyun and Crime actually combined to take down SL33 there. And now the rest of the Saints, they're just going to walk forward, push the rest of Northeastern into this small room, and take them out. Rain, Arjun did get taken out by this interesting angle there from Neats. Neats has actually found two, and Squeak ends up going down now. This this flank from the Torbjorn seems to have paid off. It ended up dividing their attention, and St. Clair, uh, it looked like they were, they, well, not even looked. They definitely weren't expecting a Torbjorn in that position, and the damage ended up being a bit too much for them. And Northeastern is able to find a successful push here. Torbjorn is not a fast dude, but yet he manages to be the flanker of the squad. You definitely don't see that every day, but it's basically what turns from what should have been 
what looks like a very Saints dominated fight. The one where the Saints had to actually like go back and regroup. Which is going to give a little bit of extra card space oh, here. He gets taken out. And John, he's going in deep once again, but this time he isn't able to find a pick. He ends up getting D-Max. He's going to be taken out here. St. Clair College, they're now essentially down two members. Redex is going to be res respawn here, but is it going to be soon enough? Oh, a pull into the Torbolt. That's a, going to be a ton of damage, as well as the window coming out there from Northeastern. St. Clair, they're looking to be a bit on the back foot here. Northeastern doing a very good job of keeping them on their toes. An absolute fantastic turnaround once again, easily getting on over to this first point. Almost five minutes still on the clock as well. Something has changed. I'm looking over. Hey, is there any sort of roster swaps or something? Did they switch a new player in? Nope, this is the exact same roster going at it and just making the first match basically a download match, it seems like, as of right now, because they're looking fantastic. Yeah, Northeastern are doing a much, much better job of combining their damage and having coordination there. And it's definitely paying off for them. We see Hyun, he tried to go in for a dive there, but unfortunately got Demek on the way, has to use the Diva ult just to get his mech suit back. But now Sinclair is up on that high ground. They're able to put down a ton of damage. The EMP did come out from Emran, and it was able to do enough. It didn't find any picks directly, but it was able to force Northeastern back enough that St. Clair, they are able to start putting down a lot of damage. And I was going to say they were stabilizing, but Northeastern, it looks like they're not quite down and out yet. They're still fighting this. They're still finding some picks. Squeak is walking forward, seeing if he can find some damage, but Northeastern responds with pushing him right back. And we see uh, windows coming out from both sides here. Going to be a lot of damage. Neither team really wants to fight this, though. They're both just fighting back, and it is going to be Northeastern oh. putting forward again. The Bob comes out, but the Dragons also comes out. Uh, Woe ends up going down, Squeak ends up going down as well. Oh. Very low, escapes with 2 HP and gets taken out by Spectro. Spectro's found 2 now. Nice and Yada play there. Needs goes very, very low, but it's kept alive by his healers. St. Clair, they need to find something now, or this cart is going to be capped. Yeah, right around the corner from, in fact, getting that done. And the extra Molten Core coming out here from Needs again is going to make it so difficult to try and defend this. But they need to go through to Lava to actually get there. Right on the brink of winning this one. It looks like Northeastern, sure enough, they're going to break the drought and get themselves on the board, winning game number one. Yeah, Northeastern just seemed like a completely different team there from what we saw in the first match. It seems like the first match, maybe they just weren't quite warmed up enough. Maybe they weren't quite on the, all on the same page. But this time around, it was clear to see that Northeastern was doing a great job of communicating. We see the pulls so good from SL33 here. Every like Nearly every single pull, almost everyone on the team was putting down a ton of follow-up damage. Spectra was throwing the Zenyatta orbs. Uh, Torb was left-clicking into it. We saw rocks coming out. Like Those Arisa pulls were huge in order to enable Northeastern to do, do some huge damage. And that was really how they kept finding all these like first picks. Like We saw so many first picks coming out from the side of Northeastern, especially compared to what happened uh, the first time we saw Rialto, that it was really, really hard for St. Clair to set up and take a proper fight. Yeah, just whenever they did actually take their fight, they made sure that everybody was on the same page and pushed for it. Meanwhile, in the first matchup, like I was saying a little bit earlier, it did seem to kind of rely a lot on Prime or one of the Saints DPS to find that early pick, which was basically the go button for the rest of the Saints to then charge on through. And that might have been why it seemed so dominating, but it seems like this time Northeaster just completely keeping it safe and the change of style allowed for players like Woe, for example, to just pop off. Yeah, for sure. Like, And we definitely saw that, like both Crime and Emran having a much harder time finding good angles to get picks and stuff. And, you know, and that that's kind of where you want to see like a bit more macro play coming out, right? Like you don't want to just rely on your DPS to like take these plays. And we did see St. Clair try to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Like the very first fight we saw there on St. Clair's defense, we saw them go for the bit of like a sneaky play. They were hiding in the stairwell. They all rushed out at the same time. And for a second there, that did work fairly well. They found the picks. They got the hold. Um, unfortunately though, it was just Neats who came around the back on that Torbjorn, threw out the turret, took down the BAP, then <laughs> the took down the Diva. Tour. Yeah, it's, it's not something that's often seen, but you know, I guess I guess that's the beauty of it, right? It's like it's so unexpected that it ends up working out. And, you know, you gotta give credit to Northeastern for like making that play and recognizing that opportunity. So we we'll, we just wanna hopefully we can see St. Clair bounce back from this and make sure that uh they recognize that even when the fight looks uh looks won, Northeastern, they definitely do not go down without a fight. They're gonna be looking for like these chances to find a few extra picks and flip the fight back in their favor. I mean I would have said the same thing about the Saints a little bit earlier, like when I was talking about how the Saints would lose a player and then they would charge on in with the ultimates anyway and still win the fight. Like 
on paper that place shouldn't happen, but it still did. And this time it was Northeastern kind of pulling that off, which was a nice little change of pace. But we're going to go right back to Nepal. And now Saints need to take this right here, right to now, for us to see a game number three. Of course, we didn't get to see game three last time, which would be Eichenwald. Mm. But again, Nepal, what do we expect to see out of Northeastern this time? Because the sky play that they initially went for with the Echo and then the rest of the comp around it just unfortunately kind of fell flat. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because uh, I, I think a big reason why it didn't work out really the first time was because they didn't really know what exactly they wanted to do. Uh, at least that's what it seemed like was you had like this core kind of pushing onto the point but not really pushing on it enough to force out Hyun on the Sigma who was keeping hold on that point and then you saw them kind of poking at the Pharah but not really enough to make sure she gets taken out and then mm. you saw them poking at the Ana but not, not full committing with a dive like they didn't send the ball to actually jump on the Ana or anything like that but this Northeastern that we just saw they were playing very committed they were playing very decisively and if they're doing it like that there's a chance that Northeastern is going to run the exact same comp and it'll work great. It all depends on how St. Clair decide to respond to it and if they can actually kind of bounce back from the little bit of like disorganization that we saw there in Rialto. Absolutely. But of course, we're going to hop into game number two in just a quick second. Here we go. Let's see what kind of characters, what kind of heroes do we got this time by here for both squads. I see echoes on both sides, actually. Yeah, so Emerin, rather than starting on the Pharah this time, it looks like he is going to be starting on the Echo. He probably wants to take that 1v1 with Neat. You know, I'm sure he's feeling pretty confident. Like, he ha he's been having a great performance, so he probably just wants to go in, take that 1v1, get the kill. Especially if he has that Mercy Pocket, that's going to be uh, a bit more effective than the Zenyatta heals in terms of, like, pocketing strength, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming we see Tracers coming back as we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, first time around, we saw Crime with a great performance against Wolf in this Tracer 1v1. He was diffing him just a little bit. And uh, we'll see if it's a recoup performance of that. Emrin still looking to see if he can put down some of these shots here onto the Vera. And Gun's up on the high ground, supporting his Ana. And a beautiful pick comes out onto Timid there from Squeak. All right, again, player advantage nice and quick here. It is going to be answered back with Reddick's going down. However, Emrin up in the skies is going to be able to answer real quick again, taking Woe off the field. And with a couple extra players off the board, it looks like Northeast can seem to be a little bit hesitant. The tanks kind of want to go in, but it doesn't seem like the rest of the squad is necessarily right there as SEL is going to get dropped nice and quick. That echo is low. Sure enough, it's going to be done taking care of that one. And the rest of the Saints are going to slowly pile on through after a little bit of a disorganized fight here from the side Northeastern. Yeah, great stuff from the Saints there. They were, they found some really solid opportunities and they can make the most of it. And uh, something interesting we saw is that uh, Emran, he's not really too focused on like this Echo 1v1 in the air. He's more just focused on like putting down tons of damage, like uh, marking that Tracer a bit and using those Sticky Bombs in order to pressure out tanks and the support for there from Northeastern. And it's working really well so far. Now Squeak is trying to mark SL3 TV here. Both the Tracers and the Balls are kind of around the side of the map just trying to take this duel seeing if they can maybe find a pick onto each other but both of them are going to back out for now Emran, he's kind of uh, on a bit of a back angle here seeing if he can load in damage from behind using those sticky bombs however crime does have a pulse bomb and we see a nano coming out from rain onto the echo that's going to be a lot of damage but he does get taken out by neats sl33 managed to find the ana as well crime does find timid so right now this fight is pretty even red x looked like he wanted to go for the res but sl33 he's rolling through finds two picks with that grapple and it looks like northeastern should be able to control this yeah Kyun jumps off the map just gets that reset and crime just gets cleaned up yeah, slowly but surely the saints are going to fall in this rain one. found a pick on the echo there that's a right interesting <laughs> a little bit of a fadeaway of sorts but yeah Rain still here does have a couple yeah, of the rest of the Saints. With, with that pick, St. Clair, they're going to be wanting to press their WPs. They're going to want to take advantage of that movement as fast as possible. And that's exactly what we see. We see the uh, mines coming out from Squeak. It's going very low, but doesn't get taken out. Finds that health back. And now we see pressure coming out onto the point. The ball here from Northeastern is going to be trying to put some pressure down on the back. Oh, but Squeak ends up rolling through his mines and gets taken out. St. Clair, they did have a bit of an advantage, but it looks like Northeastern quickly stabilized. And yeah, with Rain going down, Northeastern is going to be looking to be in control of this. Yeah, I think they're going to be forced to retreat once again. They got 60% on the board for themselves. However, Northeastern is coming back quickly with 40% of their own right. And oh. Emrin gets taken down really late as well with 
SCL33 and Neats finishing the job there. Yeah, Emren was unfortunately caught behind enemy lines, couldn't really get out. He tried to maybe see if he could get something done, but unfortunately Neats was there to make sure that he could not regroup with his team or put any damage down. But now we see an engage with the Gravitic Flux coming out from Hyun there, and does find the Echo. Just could see a pick coming out. Ooh, but a copy from the Echo is going to be used to dodge that, and uh, uh, QG Hop is going to find Crime, actually. Now we see the copy flux coming out from the Echo. It finds the pick on to be on it. Does a lot of damage onto Hyun, and the cleanup is there from the side of Northeastern. Really well done from them. That's one way, I guess, to use that Echo all day. I've never really like thought of using it that way, but to basically negate a flux by making the transformation, that was kind of cool. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting property to uh, the Echo's copy is that when she uses that ult, she has a few frames of invincibility where she can't really be affected, and some nice timing there from Neats made the most of it in order to survive that Gravitic Flux, which otherwise would have certainly been a kill. Now Hyun has swapped off that Sigma and is going to be on the Diva, so we're seeing if he maybe is looking to combine a bit more with Crime or Emran. Yeah, Crime does have a Pulse Bomb here, going to be looking to combine it with a Slam possibly. Oh, but it gets eaten by Scoop that takes oh. out that Pulse Bomb, takes out the fight. Now Squeak is going to be moving and seeing if on the back lane. Demek does come through, but Sinclair has no back line right now. Both supports taken out. Emran does manage to take out Neats, but with the health bar is dwindling from the side of St. Clair, it's going to be very hard for him to continue this. Now the ult comes out from SL33. Mine's on the point, and they do clean up. Northeastern winning this first point. And I feel like I'm seeing Deja Vu, but kind of in reverse a little bit. I mean, I, I know I'm one map early, but another eaten what? ultimate by a D.Va. This time it's going to be the Pulse Bomb getting taken off the board. What could have been maybe a crazy pick onto a support gets instantly denied. However, this is finally going to throw a little bit of a change up from what we've saw or what we've seen in the last matches. We're not going to do the or no, we are in the Sanctum now compared to what was in game number two of the last series. So. Looking forward to seeing what the players end up picking this time by, and we already see a multitude of different heroes coming out. Yeah, we are, of course, on the, the funny map. Lots of <laughs> chances for map. environmental yep. kills, lots of chances for shenanigans, and of course these teams don't disappoint. St. Clair, they're going to be running a double main tank comp along with a Doomfist and a Tracer with uh, Moira Lucio. So this is going to be a very dive heavy comp. They're going to want to press W, but he dives Ooh. right into a trap and gets taken out immediately. Very unfortunate from Emran. That's just like that's just solidly unlucky. Honestly, no one can, no one would really predict a trap there. But unfortunately, it ended up working great for the side of Northeastern. Now St. Clair, they're going to be trying to see if they can control this point using all those health bars from their double main tanks. But Neats, he's on the junk right. He loves those big health bars. He can chunk down. Emran is back. Nice pick onto the Baptiste, but he gets taken out quickly with the help of that Discord orb there. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's kind of, kind of like we said. There are some interesting shenanigans that are happening on this map. Yeah, that was just so unlucky there for Emberin. I mean, with this map being a little bit more close quarters, sometimes seeing the Junkrat is maybe like not like super, yeah. super rare. Oh, Hyun but a he dove there. in really quick and found a pick onto Woe. His health is low right now, but if he can get back to his team, he's actually pressing W. He's going very low. The lamp is used on him. He's able to get back. Squeak charged in as well and took out Timid. The, the tanks here from St. Clair, they're just going in very, very fast. And it seems to be working. But Hyundas can end up getting taken out, but now Redex, he's going in, seeking on the pick. However, attack visor here from Woe is going to make sure that St. Clair cannot push. They're going to want to back out. Samrin went in anyway, but he died quickly. Yeah, so the Saints tried to make an attempt to get to that point, and they nearly had it three quarters of the way there. But unfortunately, the ultimates all come out here. Granted, Neat's Riptire didn't necessarily find the elimination, but then it allowed for Woe to just pop the attack visor and finish off everybody else who was on the point. So yeah. Oh, got him real that could be a critical misplay from Northeastern. Uh -oh. They just used the Baptiste Lamp. That lack of immortality could be a huge chance for Sinclair to go in, find some quick picks, especially with the Reaper here now from Emran. We also see a Baptiste window coming out from the side of Northeastern, and the Baptiste window actually pays off dividends. Huge picks coming out from Northeastern. St. Clair, they're very much on the back foot right now. Yeah, some great back packing here, 75%. They are kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place here. Their force uses Shatter in such an awkward angle, but they're going to try and make it happen anyway. Gun is diving on in with the Primal Rage. Extremely low health, though. Sure enough, the traps are finding so much value in this matchup here, and the Saints are not able to capitalize in the slightest on any sort of like opportunity they get. Nice beat coming out from Redex. Gonna keep St. Clair alive through that Vedic Flux. And oh no, Emrin has been booped Boop. off the map. A tragic situation once again. However, Crime does take out Neats. 
uh, while he's stuck in that retire state. And we see uh, Arjun Rain in that back corner using the back piece window. And this is gonna, he's gonna try and keep his Rhine up there on the point with all that healing coming through the window. But unfortunately, we see the TAC Visor in conjunction with the uh, Supercharger. And right now, they have, they have to touch. They do manage to find the touch, get that overtime. A nice boot comes out from Red X, finds the pick onto Scoop. Emrin does take out some 3 3. Northeastern has no tanks right now, but unfortunately, the damage is so powerful. Now we're saying they're going to be able to win this. It's so hard to say right now. Crime is really the only one left alive. Emran does TP back to the point. With those who are alive, they might be able to turn this. But unfortunately, the soldier up on that far corner is just laying down so much damage. St. Clair, they have to start finding some picks here, or it's going to be very hard to turn. A nice boop from Red X does delay that Doom up, but now, whoa, he's gone on a completely other angle. He's going playing from underneath. He's finding so much damage. Rain does find a pick with that damage orb in the room. And now we see the Reinhardt coming out from SL33. Swap's coming out from both sides here. Hyun gets DMAC. And unfortunately, Scoop is cleaning up right now. Finds two picks. Emran finds three picks, make that, sorry. Uh, Crime is back on point. Uh, doesn't quite find anything with Pulse Bomb. Scoop falls off the map, but it's not going to be quite enough. Northeastern end up winning the second series 2-0 in exactly the same manner that St. Clair won the first one. Okay, then. That was definitely unexpected after the way that uh, match number one went. But honestly, big props to Northeastern for not getting shook after the first series. And they really just turned it up there to say least. We're going to see play of the game here from SCL after a double kill with the, uh, the grappling hook, getting so much extra speed by just charging through like that. But that was definitely eye-opening, to say the least. It was, yeah. And unfortunately, the thing that we talked about St. Clair, like this comp flexibility, I think it ended up being their downfall a little bit there on that final map. Like, double main tank is not really... there's. It's not really a widely run comp, and there's a good reason for that, right? Like, sure, you are able to press W to an unprecedented degree. You can mm -hmm. go in super, super fast, but you just don't really have the sustain or the utility that you get when you have an off tank there with you. And unfortunately, it was a very creative comp, but it didn't quite work out this time for them. Northeastern, they stayed with the more traditional ways, and once they just kind of cleaned up their coordination and their gameplay, it did seem like they were able to come out on top pretty solidly. I was going to say is, like, double main tank something that maybe they're practicing for Overwatch 2. Wait a second. No, you can't actually <laughs> do that. No, there's only one tank. So yeah. Like, oh, well, it's interesting because if we if we kind of look at Overwatch 2 and their Doomfist is a tank, right? Yeah. So it's almost like they were trying to run a triple tank setup, which, <laughs> unfortunately, it didn't work out this time. But, you know, end of the day, St. Clair, they were able to take that first map in just as dominant a fashion as Northeastern was able to take out that second, take or take that second series, right? So... End of the day, this has been a very interesting series. Both teams just kind of steamrolled each other back to back. Um, it looks like maybe St. Clair, they got a little too comfortable after the first win, and Northeastern were just a bit too good at that very quick adaptation. Um, but overall, I think that was a great match. Yeah, absolutely. It is honestly, like, it leaves me, like, dumbfounded a little bit with the way this format is because it's like, here we won, but now we lost. Like, I just don't know how to feel about it, to say the least. But I guess that's just the way this uh, tournament format will be laid out for us. And it's not going to be the last time that we get to see this uh, Overwatch team in action this week. In fact, we're going to see him again tomorrow. It's going to be supposedly the same kind of setup. We're supposed to have a Rocket League game at 7 o'clock. <laughs> and then it's going to be another double header matchup of Overwatch right after the bat. So it's good to see a bunch of Overwatch action prior to September. Curious as to... Like what the adaption, what the changes here? Because I worry that like you're kind of making some concerns in regards to the quick switching style. Like I know just from my limited Overwatch knowledge, with it resetting your ult charge constantly, it does kind of leave you short for making some big plays. I suppose it can definitely hurt you in terms of like the ult economy landscape, right? Like if you're if the enemy team is able to just build up the ult and they have a good rotation and you're constantly swapping, it's going to be really hard for you to start matching that rotation. Unless you have like situations like we saw in the first series where your DPS pop off and find great picks, mm -hmm. then it can be really hard to kind of make up that deficit. And unfortunately, they weren't able to do it there in that second series. And I think that's a big part of why Northeastern looked so dominant because they stuck with a tried and true method and they made it work really well. And St. Clair, as much as I loved seeing their creativity, it it clearly needs a little bit more work and a bit more refining in order to stay consistently uh, something that's good to be using. Very, very true. Because, of course, trying to rely on 
pop-off moments is not a very consistent thing in the slightest to say the least but that being said though it was awesome getting to watch the roster like getting to watch a bunch of these new players come on through getting to see Arjun play again even if he was disguised as rain there for that first match <laughs> and we didn't really necessarily realize but it's good to see everybody playing good having you on the commentary desk here thank you so much for joining i hope here. you enjoyed yourself great match to watch great match to cast and i'm definitely looking forward to seeing what the future matches look like <laughs> Absolutely. Of course, again, one more time, we do have plenty of more Overwatch coming up here with another double header tomorrow. That'll be starting at 8 o'clock, happening right after Rocket League. So, busy weekend. We haven't even got into the school year yet. We already have broadcast after broadcast. So, definitely hope all of you at home, first off, enjoyed yourselves. Thank you for tuning in and supporting the stream, the, the team, your family members, friends, whomever it may be. Thank you for supporting them in their esports endeavors. And then just make sure you follow our social medias and our Twitch to make sure you catch when all the matches are live. Sure. Thank you all for being here. And with that being said, we will call it a night for tonight. Thank you all once again. We will see you tomorrow for another doubleheader. Things just that much more difficult. We have Prime there. Dead Eye is not going to quite find its mark. It looks like never mind. It's a double kill. What am I on today? My goodness, he's going to find himself a triple, and he basically make that a quadra. He just stopped this in its tracks. Prime, right away. We're seeing Emerson actually getting off of the Farah and just opting to go back towards something more ground based here with the soldier. Yeah, Emerson is looking like he's just had a ooh nice got early pick from Crime. Uh, Northeastern there as well. And, okay, so Northeastern on the board getting some percent for the time being. Let's take a look at the alt scouts here. It's just the Valkyrie and the Pulse Bomb. Of course, still absolutely able to oh, do some tracer damage, falls especially in. if they can find the Zenyatta. Tons of shots. We actually see a Lucio swap coming up inside the Northeastern. They know that they're in dire straits. they got to swap to try and contest. Well, you can see Emran. He's just kind of bullying this Lucio, looking for him. A sleep comes out. He can't oh. even touch. Now the D.Va from really Northeastern. Really nice speeding there. From St. Clair, he is going to put them on control of the point first. So now that May Wall that Northeastern was hoping to utilize isn't even going to get the chance. And St. Clair, they're just going to charge on forward and run wow. them down. Yeah, absolutely mowed on over there. It's nothing Side but the Eastern. Fire Strike goes through it, not enough to find a pick. Squeak does charge in and he finds a pick on the Timid. And Emery finds a pick on the SL33. And Deep Bomb comes out as well. Emery finds another pick. He's rocking forward. DPS for St. Clair doing so well right now at finding these picks. And despite that <laughs> strategy from Northeastern, they tried to TP straight up onto there and it go for a shatter. It didn't quite work. The squeak just ended up pinning him straight back, took down his shield, and Prime was able to clean him up with a dead eye. And from there, the rest of the Saints, they just walked straight in and ended up cleaning up the fight. It does look like these teams are very close to going even right now. Maywell's coming out, or Simwall, sorry, coming up both sides. Emran is able to find one, make that two picks. He's going to be very high charge right now, looking to move forward. Yun moving forward as well, trying to chase out the yeah. Just with a different tag, so that's why I was a little bit confused to say the least, but of course, good seeing one of our other things still back in action here. Yeah. We see the same just plowing through this one. Yeah. SL3 the he he out there from Rain or Arjun. And they're just going to be holding them literally in their spawn right now. Just past that doorway. That is Northeastern spawn. So they don't want to let them out. SL33 tried to walk out and he got immediately deleted. And St. Clair, they're just going to walk the cart right onto the checkpoint. Yep. Their own. That damage, St. Clair doesn't want to deal with it. So they drop off. They are willing to give up that space. But they're still getting the cart control. So now it's going to be on Northeastern to see if they can take advantage of this high ground. But SL33, he was on the ground. He was on the low ground. He got taken out. Now we see the spawns coming up from and the Torbolt. And it might be enough. Now we see the rally coming out as well. They're going to keep pushing forward. Forward. Northeastern using the Supercharger to respond. Both teams now kind of just fighting over this corner, and it is going to be Northeastern coming out on top. That Supercharger damage, just a little too much for Saints. The Bongo to re-engage was really well played from them. And of course, that early pick on the Prime did kind of set them up for success there. And now we see the infamous bridge once again, especially oh, no. shooting through a back window. Oh. It's, he's basically a day at the shooting. Just a, uh, a turret bomb. Didn't do too, too much, but it did force Northeastern back a little bit. And with some nice pressure coming up from Squeak, he's just doing a great job of pushing Northeastern back. with moving the members all over the place. And we see a C9! Oh no, I didn't. Taken out here. St. Clair College, they're now essentially down two members. 
Redux is going to be res respawn here, but is it going to be soon enough? Oh, a pull into the Torbo. That's going to be a ton of damage, as well as the window coming out there from Northeastern. St. Clair taking out, finds that health back. And now we see pressure coming out onto the point. The ball here from Northeastern is going to be trying to put some pressure down on the back. Oh, but Squeak ends up rolling through his mines and gets taken out. St. Clair, they did have a bit of an advantage, but it looks like Northeastern has quickly stabilized. And yeah, now we see an engage with the Gravitic Flux coming out from Gun there. And does find the Echo. We could see a pick coming out. Ooh, but a copy from the Echo is going to be used to dodge that. And uh, QG Hop is going to find Prime, actually. They're going to be looking to combine it with a Slam, possibly. Oh, but it gets eaten by Scoop. That takes oh. out that Pulse Bomb, takes out the fight. Now Squeak is going to be moving in. Seems to find the backline. Demek does come through, but Sinclair has no backline right now. Both supports taken out. Emrin does manage to take out Neats.